Welcome back to day six of 12 games of Christmas with me, Mr. Hill26. And it's been a great start already in five days. We've had so many very different projects and ideas. It's been wonderful to see all of your hard work on Scratch. And I know some of you may be just fading a little bit or maybe you haven't, don't think you've got enough time to hand in your project or idea. But stick with it, guys. 12 games of Christmas. We've got a few days left. Get those ideas in. Today's featured game is one of my games that I've made specially for 12 Games of Christmas. It's Hangman Christmas Special. And let's get straight into it and have a little play, shall we? So we've got a button here which says Let's Play. This background was done using Canva. And then we have our character and we have our word here. Now you notice I've used a variable, but the variable has all of these letters in. I will show you how I've done that later on. Now it says Guess Our Letter. So I can put in W. And it's not in there, so I'll try a different one. Press A, and you can see, as I'm not getting it correct, the hangman is being drawn on the side. So let's try an E. Oh my goodness, there's no E's either. Let's try an O. Oh, I've got an O. Oh, it's a stocking. So there we go, I guessed it. I get some flashing lights. And it says click the green flag to try again. And then when I play again, we shouldn't have the same word. So if I type S this time, we can see it's in a different place. It's a different word. So the reason why it's featured is because we're going to get straight into the game after we've learned from our top tip from one of the forum Scratch experts. And don't forget, you can submit your games to the studio and maybe they'll be featured in the next day or two. Thank you so much to my new account for the top tips from the Scratch experts today. And there's a few tips on here. Uh, one of them I'm going to talk about in a moment. But first of all, this code. And this is something that you probably do know. But just in case you don't, this was mind blowing when I first found this out. Uh, when you flag clicked, we kind of know. In fact, when we have, say, the right arrow key pressed, the first time I ever taught coding to my students, I always taught them. Uh, when you press the right arrow, change X by 10. And that means when I click the right arrow, it moves it by 10. And so you can duplicate that. So you uh, can right click on it and duplicate and you can do left arrow and change it by minus 10. And so you have a moving sprite. When I then realized that there is a better way to do this to make it more smooth, it changed my games. And just to show you how this works, is you have to do a when flag clicked and you have to have a forever. So this is a different way of doing uh, the code. So I'll just keep these because I'm going to need them. So when flag clicked forever, so it's checking all of the time in your code, you're going to use the sensing bot. So I'm going to need an if, okay? And then in the sensing area, there is a key space press. So if I choose key space press, but choose right arrow. Basically, this is saying forever, if you are pressing the right key, move X by 10. And you get this lovely, really nice smooth motion. And again, I can duplicate that and change it so it goes to minus 10. And now when I'm playing the game, oh, I've not, I've just changed that to left. There we go. So when I'm playing the game, now left and right is much smoother. You've not got that jolt between each step. And obviously you can do the same for up and down, but using Y instead of X. And when you do that, you'll have a really nice smooth moving sprite. So well done for um, recommending that tip for me, uh, my new account, because I'm sure there's lots of people who would benefit from that. Also on my new accounts tips was the idea of getting some help from the Scratch forums. Now, if we go to the Scratch homepage and you go right down to the bottom, you'll see here it says Discussion Forums and Scratch Wiki. Now, a wiki is a website that has loads of information shared, created by all the people of the internet. So there are some really good topics in the Scratch Wiki. And you can see it's got it in different languages too that have been uh, translated. This has all been done by the Scratch community free of charge. It really is amazing. And you can search all sorts of different blocks and different types and extensions and you'll get loads of information on there. If you click discussion forums, you 
open yourself up to a world of a scratch community which is just incredible you can get help with your scripts and people will help you just need to post a link to your project and the people will genuinely help you and you are looking at probably through 24 hours a day people are posting things sometimes your uh your question gets missed and it takes a while for people to respond but you can see here we have got uh one two three four five six the most recent six posts haven't had any help but since then there have been responses to nearly every question okay sometimes you might not get an answer sometimes there's lots of views and lots of people recommend different ways so it's a really cool way to get help and to get inspiration and if you dive deep down into the discussion forums you'll find collaboration ideas you'll find jobs and it's incredible the community what they're doing out there so Get yourself onto the Scratch forums if you are a big scratcher. There is lots to see there as well. Thank you so much for those top tips. Our Scratch expert today. I will post the link to my new account's profile so you can go along and follow there as well. So you've seen how the game works, you've got to put in some letters and try and figure it out and if you don't figure it out in time, you run out of lives and the game is over. So something that I have noticed whilst playing this game is there's a glitch. So when I was testing out my game, I noticed that if I keep clicking on the same letter over and over, so if I keep clicking in T, my lives don't change and it just ends up in this loop. So we're going to have a look inside and see if I can fix that code so that when I type a letter that I've already guessed, it tells me. Now we can see a lot of complex code in here and I don't want to go through it all today because it would take a long time. But all I need to tell you is that this is heavily based using lists and if you want to ever learn Python, which is a very popular coding language, you need to kind of understand how this works. So I've got three lists already in the game. I've got a display, which is what you see in the middle. I have a word list, which is where all the words are for the game. No cheating now, but they're all there. And I also have a letter list as well. And that's the, basically the word that's been chosen and each letter of that word. So you can see here, letter the word is festive and there are seven letters to it all there. And in the display, you're trying to fill in the display to match each letter. So each time the game runs, what it's ha what's actually happening is it's checking every letter to see if it matches anywhere in the word. And if it does, it swaps the little space for that letter. Okay, now in abstraction, which is a big part of computational thinking, sometimes you don't have to worry about how it works, just know that it does. So if you ever want to remix this game, just understand that what it's doing each time is it's checking to see if the letter is in the word. And if it is, then it's replacing it. And all of this code goes on over here. And you can kind of see where I've been talking about. You can see it says repeat until not the word contains blank, which basically means it's going to keep going until there are no blanks left. There are no dashes left or until the lives hit seven, which basically means I've run out of lives. And then it's going to guess a letter and that's all that's all this bit here is the code for checking each time is the letter in there so once it's done this quick check okay there's definitely not any blanks and you've still got lives left it's going to ask the question what letter and it's going to check right so the first letter i'm, I'm going to check letter number one first so i'm going to check is it is letter number one a so for example, if I put the letter A in and it will check and then it'll check, it'll go that loop and it'll say, right, okay, I'll check for every single letter. I'll check one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven to see if there's an A in there. And if there is, I'm going to replace it. And if not, you lose a life. So now I want to check if it's possible to check if I've guessed the letter already. And to do that, I'm going to have to create a new list and we're going to call it I don't know, let's say guest letters. And at the moment, there's nothing in it. You can see, I'm going to put it over here so you can see there's nothing in guest letters. And that's what I want because no one's guessed any letters yet. But 
every time someone guesses a letter, I need that to be added in. But before we add it in, we need to check first that we haven't already got it. So I'm going to dra dra uh, drag out an if block, and then I'm going to drag out this block, which is an does it contain something? So there's this one, and there's also another one which says, is it in the list? You see, they're very, very similar. One of them checks if it contains it, and one of them checks if it's in a list. Well, I want to use the one that checks if it's in a list. So I'll change it to my guest letters. Does my guest letters contain the answer? That's the word, the letter that the player has given. So is it already in a list is basically what that says. Is it in the list, list of guest letters? If it is in the list, if that is true, then we're going to say something. We're going to say, oh, you've guessed this letter. But if it isn't in there, well, then we need to add it in so that for next time, if they repeat that letter again, we know it's already in there. So we go down here and we can see at the top uh, there is a block which says add item to, to the list. So we want to add the answer to the list. OK, so now where do I put this block? Well, I need this to check straight after we have asked the question, OK? But I also need to make sure that when I add this in, if you think about it, if the letter is not in the guest letters, I need it to run all of my code. So I need to be really careful where I add this. So it's going to start just after we ask for a letter, OK? So I need to fit that in. Oops, I've just got that not quite right. So let me just. OK, so I'm going to put all the rest of the code. In the else. And I'm going to put the ask letter and wait there. So basically it's going to ask a letter if the letter's in the guess letters list, then it's going to say, oh, no, sorry, you've already guessed that letter. And if it's not, it's going to run the rest of my code. OK, we can't see it clearly because I've got my list viewing, but let's just see if we can um, get this to work. All right, so when I type in a letter, oh, it didn't go into the guess letters. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I didn't, I need to change that list to guest letters. There we go. It was adding it in the wrong place. Let's try again. So the word is slay. So when I type in a letter, R, R is not in the word, but it's now a guest letter. And when I click R again, it doesn't appear again in guest letters because it's already there. Now you can't see behind, uh, but Scratch Cat's telling me I've got to guess for another letter. And there we go. So we've added that feature in now, so we won't get any duplicates or any problems with that. And you can see them adding into the guest letters every time I add it, whether it's in the display or not, it's going to be added into there. So we can hide all of those lists now, have a look at what it looks like, and play a game of Hangman. Now this was quite a tricky tutorial to follow, especially if you are not comfortable with lists, but Fingers crossed, uh, you managed to solve a little bit. Oh, hang on, it's not working. Uh, I know why, I know why. My list hasn't reset at the start of the game. So it was saying I'd already guessed letters when I hadn't, because from the previous game, it was the, the list still had those letters. So I need to make sure that when I press the green flag, that the guest letters is gone is all deleted. Everything is deleted. Ah, there we go. Love a bit of debugging. Now we can try it. Guess a letter. Nope, that's not in it. Then S, and I can keep pressing it. I guess another letter. And oh, we've guessed that letter. So everything's working just as it should. Okay, I hope you followed that. That was a long one today, goodness me. But that's the end of day six of 12 Games of Christmas. I'll see you for day seven.